Good evening. I'd like to welcome all parents, grandparents, and friends, the faculty, and of course, the students. Thank you all for coming to the graduation of the class of 2012. When I was told I had to write a speech, I was incredibly excited, but also quite overwhelmed. Nobody was helpful when I asked for tips, so I figured I'd just write about all the stuff I liked about high school. Uh-huh, wait, no. That would make for a very short speech. <laughs> Anyways, we are sitting on this stage, eagerly twiddling our thumbs, just waiting to walk across it and receive our diplomas. Do you realize what that means? We are finally done. We did it. All our stress and frustration has finally paid off, and our efforts culminate tonight. Yes, it is a bittersweet moment. Yes, we will be leaving one another, and we may never all be together again. But tonight is not for tears. It is for smiling, laughing, remembering, and celebrating. We've done so much in high school. We've made friends, had successes, screwed up a few times, and faced obstacles that threatened to crush us. Like Mrs. Baker. But we all survived her class. <laughs> We've laughed until we cried, become practically professional procrastinators. Did you like that alliteration, Ms. Baker? Overslept, underslept, and stayed up all night just to do it all again the next day. But now we are all up here, and that means we made it. It also means that we will soon all embark on different journeys. Looking back over the past four years, I know we've learned a ton, and complained a ton while doing so. Even though we've been forced to learn about what minerals make up Earth's crust and how to find derivatives, there are some important and unforgettable things that high school has taught us. You can probably forget about derivatives and rocks and be fine. Just make sure you remember your writing skills, because I feel like they might actually come in handy one day. Anyway, high school has taught me that everyone is an individual that has been given one shot. You have a whole life ahead of you, so live it to the fullest. I mean, everybody knows the motto, YOLO. Okay, maybe not everyone. Earlier this afternoon when I was practicing, I realized that not even Mr. Miami knows what YOLO is. So, for those in the audience that may be less attuned to modern cultural references, it stands for, you only live once. And it is very true. So, be unique, and don't let anyone tell you that you're not good enough. What other people think and say doesn't matter. Also, don't try too hard to be perfect. It's overrated anyway. Trust me, it can get really tiring. <laughs> Just kidding. But if you really want to know, ask Matt Foley. Oh. <laughs> Remember to live life how you want to, and to always, always be yourself. That is how you will be truly happy. There is one quote I read that I'd like to share with you all. For a long time, it seemed to me that real life was about to begin. But there was always some obstacle in my way. Something to be gotten through first. Some unfinished business. Time still to be served. Some debt to be paid. Then life would begin. At last, it dawned on me that these obstacles were my life. This is appropriate because we are about to begin real life. Our lives will have obstacles. I mean, we've gotten through one already. And there are plenty more to come. So, strap yourselves in and enjoy the wild ride. That doesn't mean that life will be unbearably difficult, just that it might be a bit bumpier and more exciting than we think. Remember high school for everything it taught you. Like they say, learn from the past, live for today, and look to tomorrow. Oh, and if there's one most important piece of advice I can give to you all tonight, I would quote Miss Wilgus and say, don't be a goo-goo and don't get shot. <laughs> <laughs> and also, on behalf of my classmates, I'd like to wish Mr. Bocelli a happy retirement. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2012.
So, I was watching the movie Mean Girls on TV a few days before writing the speech, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if my classmates and I got to hear a first-hand account of a similar story that could deliver a strong message to us graduates for the future? I knew the writers of the movie had based the plot on personal accounts. So I got in contact with my cousin, who was a big wig in the entertainment industry, and he made a few phone calls. And after freeing her schedule, Mean Girls writer Tina Fey has graciously agreed to speak to us about her personal experience with growing up. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming actress and writer Tina Fey. speech that will leave everyone yawning. Here we are, class of 2012, after four grueling years of tedious religion projects, uniform, I mean, prescribed dress code, and Mr. Bosquet's glorious puns, we're finished. Well, we're finished until we start all over in three months. So, I'm sure we're all very familiar with the poor reputation our class has supposedly earned. Every department, from PE to English, has had complaints about this being an extremely unmotivated and immature class. And from being a part of this class myself, I can say there might be some darn good justification for all of that. <laughs> but although we may appear to be the pompous, obnoxious jocks, and the superficial pretty people, and those engaged in less than admirable extracurriculars, there's a unity that has been built among the members of this class. A unity that can only be formed with the everyday interactions we would only receive in a small, intimate school setting. A unity that can only exist if each student has a mutual understanding and, more importantly, a mutual respect for the other. And a unity that can only survive if we stay in touch. Sure, some of us might be more than ready to leave the school behind and get on to the next phase of our lives. But let's not forget about the moments we shared as a class the lunches that were spent laughing rather than eating, the sports championships that so many teams accrued, each of the retreats where we got to know different sides of people who we claimed we already knew, and every seemingly insignificant and foolish action, event, or comment that has altered our high school experience. And it's for these moments that I would like to say thank you to all of my classmates, to all the faculty, and to all the parents and the grandparents. And even if there weren't many memorable moments for some of us, and even if we aren't going to miss the people, the school, or the atmosphere all that much, let's try our best to make some memorable moments for ourselves in the future. Because these are our formative years, and these are our years to fully realize our potential. The slideshow we saw showed us all exactly how much we can change in four years. Connor got out of his mullet phase, and Nathan's body finally caught up to the size of his huge head. <laughs> It also showed us what things might never change, like Elise's ability to gather leg injuries. And obviously, this physical change is only the concrete change. Our personalities and our minds have transitioned as well. We've learned from others. What have we learned? Well, to start, that it's never a good idea to put someone in a sleeper hole during English class. And no Hummer is ever safe in Norfolk. We've learned to question the world around us. We're all left questioning whether Mr. Miami is more like Mr. Ray from Finding Nemo, who will provide comfort and love for the kids, or a more sarcastic version of Patches O'Houlihan from Dodgeball, throwing wrenches at his students. <laughs> oh, we also learned how to write a thesis statement. It's just, oh sorry. And who exactly have we learned from? I'd venture to say some of the most unique people you may ever have the chance to meet. We have the artist who can doodle a Picasso, but is still a star athlete. We have the atheist who can openly question the existence of a supreme being while exercising all the values of Christianity. We have the up-and-coming white rapper. And, well, what other class could ever claim to have Jeffrey Swope? <laughs> it's this individual uniqueness that has allowed our class to achieve the unity we have. There is a sense of closeness in all of this diversity. It's what allows us to understand very different people and expand our connection with the human community. 
With this in mind, it's important that we maintain our individuality and our quirky uniqueness. We can go through all the change and formation that we need, but we must always be true to ourselves. We must care more about our individual actions and personalities and our collective reputations. As a late basketball coach, John Wooden put it, be more concerned with your character than your reputation, because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. Everyone has to discern for him or herself what benchmark to use to guide their actions. For me, this has been providing an unwavering role model for my younger sister, Caroline. If we just put our desire to please everyone and our desire to maintain, maintain the cool or the funny or the chill reputation on the back burner, we can accomplish so much more. And that's my hope for this class, that our best days aren't behind us, that the peaks of our lives, we're not winning the TCIS football championship or tossing a few crickets in the hallways or having a prominent role in the school play. Sure, some of these may be tremendous achievements and great memories, but everyone in this class has the capability to accomplish something much more spectacular in his or her life. So if fate is contrary to what the senior superlatives predict, and Molly and, Cra Molly and Chris aren't the only members of this class surviving at the end of 2012, I'd say that the future is looking very bright. Thank you.